Ladies and gentlemen, this is David Maricatani with another episode of Matt Chat brought to you by USA Wrestling, the national governing body for wrestling in the United States, and by Nike Wrestling. Go to athleteps.com for all of your wrestling branded, USA Wrestling branded gear. Uh, happy and excited to welcome back to the show head coach from Oklahoma University, Lou Rosselli. Coach, thanks for coming back on with me. Yeah, no problem. How's things going? It's good, man. It's good. Uh, it's, I, I took a vacation for the first time in 17 years. I didn't know what to do with myself. So I'm back <laughs> nice. at it. Nice. I'm back at it. So uh, back to the grind. Back to the grind. And I saw how you guys did at Michigan State. And I'm like, let's talk. Uh, I want to kind of go through some things chronologically. Uh, start back in March. You guys wrestled really, really well at the Big 12s. We were excited to be on the call for that for the ESPN Scramble Cam. A lot of your kids really wrestle well, especially in the backside. Ton of bonus points. You win the Big 12. Uh, obviously, the NCAs, you know, you had an All-American. Didn't go the way you wanted for all your kids. But looking at it optimistically, how important was it to be co-Big 12 champions and what that means to the university, to alumni, to parents, it, it has to have, have a dip, make an impact on things, right? Well, it certainly has an impact. You know, they, we hadn't won in 19 years, you know, and so, you know, just getting it, you know, won it, you know, is, is, is a big deal, you know, and I know that the Nationals, we had, you know, we were probably about, you know, we had two guys in the round of 12 that, that, that took a hit, Dom took a hit, and so did Mitch Moore. You know, and if, if they would have both placed, I think, you know, people would, it wouldn't be, it, it wouldn't have been as dismal, I guess, you know, so I'm, you got to look at things kind of in perspective, you know, we had six people or six times, I think we lost in overtime at the nationals. So we, we just didn't win the close ones and you got to be, you got to win those at that tournament to be successful. So, you know, that's just kind of how it goes and you just keep building and, and um, it's exciting to keep building and getting to some of the, the people we're getting and, and the, the work that we're putting in. So, you know, you just keep going day by day, you know, and but the big 12 is, is a good tipping point. You know, it's a good, it's a good marker, you know, winning the big 12s and obviously want to have great nationals performance. You know, personally, I like to win at everything. You know, I went, every time we put somebody out there, I want to compete and, and, and do well. So it just, it's building the right mentality inside the program and, and, um, and getting the right workload done and getting the right kids. Yeah, for sure. And so, you know, one of the things that stuck out to me from, your results was uh, some of the success you've had with recruiting and especially the portal. Um, we're recruit we're recording this on November 9th and the signing date is tomorrow, November 10th. So I don't know who you can talk about and who you're not allowed to talk about legally. No, no. And I'm yeah, yeah, we can't talk about any, any recruiting stuff. Yeah, you know, they but you can talk about like Prada. You can, you can yeah, talk about a Prada, right? Because yeah. he's there, he's wearing the singlet. Yeah. So, you, you know, you and I talked about that when he came in just off air and having a spark plug and getting a good wrestler is always good, period, right? But a guy where you were scoring basically no points in a weight class last year and most of the time is the kickoff weight in dual meets and always in tournaments, that, that had to be pretty significant. And, you know, he goes right out and, and wins this weekend. So, I mean, what kind of impact has he had on you guys even in the short term? Well, Tony, um, Joey's a really hard worker, you know, and, and he, he shows a lot of grit and he has a workmanship mentality. He's, he's a student of wrestling. He's always trying to learn, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad he's with us, you know, because, because of his work ethic and, and, you know, and the way he does it and his goals and what he's trying to achieve. And, and those things, you know, as you know, in a dual meet, it, it, it's the start, it's the, it's the igniter of, of, uh, of the dual meet. So if you can have somebody that's an impact person that can go out and, and wrestle hard and be gritty and go get W's, it'll make a difference. You know, it kind of stat, sets the, the tone for what's going to happen. So, um, you know, we're excited about him. You know, obviously I think we still got work to do, but I, but I do think that, you know, he won a bunch of close matches and he's got to start, you know, building those leads and learning and taking it that to another level. But, um, but it's a good start for him. Yeah. And, you know, you talked about, about it fairly on both sides, how you lost a bunch of close matches at nationals and, and, and Prada in particular won a lot of close matches this weekend. And, you know, I've had coaches tell me like life is life is a one point match. Like life is what you should have said theater. Like you get one chance to talk to the girl. Game of eyelashes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. I mean, you, you have a saying I've stolen from people. It's like some of these kids are really good at the XYZs and they're not that good at the ABCs. And 
you know, almost getting coached in reverse and stuff like that. So, um, but it's got to be nice as you guys start to head into dual meets to know you've got a chance to win a lot of those matches at 125. And then, you know, Madrigal obviously arguably had the best tournament of the weekend of anybody, you know, yeah, he's going to move it, way up in the rankings, right? Well, you like to think, you know, um, Tony's always been pretty successful. And I think that now he's got his weight managed better. Um, he's got better training situation. I think Thomas Sello's helping him. I think uh, Sam Hazelwinkle's helping him. You know, I, I think those guys having partners, you know, um, it makes a difference. It makes a difference how much you grow and, and how hard you can wrestle and, and the intensity that you can go at. And I think that Tony's always been really talented. And, um, and it, I've always believed that he, he could be really successful if he just can get, his, you know, get that under control, get a little more muscle. You know, uh, he has a really good wrestling IQ. So it's exciting to see him get some, get some wins over some really high-ranked opponents. But, and again, you're, you're winning close. And, um, and you know, you just got to keep separating that and keep improving and keep making ground and keep doing that. It's about the detail, right? Doing the little things right. And I think if he continues to do that, he can continue to be an impact player for us and, and go out there and, and show what he's really made of. Yeah, I mean, he made the finals of the Big 12s last year, which is obviously huge for you guys for the team score. Obviously helped him a lot with seeding at Nationals. But that was a weight class where it was like, you know, Fix was the one seed and all these other guys had all kind of beaten everybody else or had a bunch of one had a bunch of one point yeah. matches with each other. Like that seems to be the theme so far. He figured out a way to win a couple of those there. And yeah. it did seem like he just had his composure between <laughs> again. Well, you know, a year ago we came off, we came off that COVID year and, and, you know, we didn't get to spend any time with any of our student athletes. You know, we went from March to, to August without having, uh, you know, seen them, you know, and it just tells you about structure. The kids need structure. They need a coach. They need somebody to discipline them, to keep them, hold them accountable, to make sure they're doing things the right way. They need to be reminded all the time about the little things. And I, and I think this year was different, you know, so far, you know, he had a good summer, worked really hard. You know, we trained, you know, we helped Nate get ready for some of his competitions. And um, I think it's making an impact on him. I think, it, you know, you're learning, you're learning what it looks like. You know, you see what it looks like and you wrestle with a guy that, that shows you what it looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, I'm hoping that we can, can he can continue and, and be consistent because that, that's part of being, is, is being consistent. Yeah, when you think about the all-time greats in any sport, <laughs> It's not just can you do that every every weekend week out back to back. They they just perform they just perform consistently well, and they always have that kind of effort and they always bring the juice. And so, you know, you, you still got a lot to do there. You still got to do what you got to you know to compete well. You know, there's a long it's a long season. You still got to make weight for another you know four or five months and and um, it's discipline. So we'll see. The more discipline he has, the better better season you have. You know, it's interesting, like. I think like if you're on my side of it in the media, like, or like you other sports, like you play fantasy football or these other things, sometimes you forget these are human beings. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like somebody had a fight a with kid. their wife or their girlfriend or whatever. Right. And you forget, like, you know, you, you get involved in statistics and things like that. And you're like, why can't this guy throw three touchdowns every week or something like that. And you forget like, mm -hmm. like Luke Becker was on last week. And I had talked to him in Coralville and he talked about how McKee got his weight under control and it made a big difference at nationals. Obviously he had a huge run. And I know those guys, I know you create structure. I know you tell these guys, you shouldn't be more than this much over. You should eat this kind of food. You should eat at this time of the day. You should, you know, all these different things. It's not like you just started coaching them at the big 12s and nationals to do it. Right. You know, you're doing that. 52 weeks of the year, but sometimes it just sticks with kids. And when you, you mentioned structure, it's almost like advertising. Like it just, it just keeps hitting you and hitting you. And you finally like, Oh, that's how I'm supposed to do it. And that's generally why seniors and older guys end up doing better. Cause they sort of bought into some things. You're a huge structure guy. How frustrating was it last year or, or you know, with, with the COVID stuff versus now where you can actually do what you do well. Well, it was frustrating just because, you know, it, you know, we're really behind because, you know, when we structure everything through the summer and, you know, we have practice a lot here and, um, you know, when you don't have that and they get, they get to pick and choose what they want to do, you know, it, it, it's, it's not the same, you know, it's not coming in the morning, coming in the afternoon. It's, you know, and they eat unlimited and 
So, you know, you have a 33 punter like Tony that, you know, and I don't know his exact weight, what he got up to, but I'd say he got over, over 60, you know, and then you're trying to cut to 33. And so, you know, and, and he's bringing his weight down. He's trying to do it. He's, you know, chasing, 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 you know, and it's just taken too long. And by the big 12s, he was okay. I still think at the big 12s, he was an okay wrestler. I think he's wrestling better now than he has since I've, since I've known him. So, but a lot of it comes from just managing weight and, until they get whomped a few times, you know, you, sometimes you just got to get whomped and to realize that this isn't working. I got to figure out a way to do things better, you know, and, and you can tell them a hundred times, but sometimes getting a good beating is, is the, you know, and learning from that way. That's, if that's the only way you'll, 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 you'll listen then, you know, and some of it might've been that some of it might've been me harping on it. Some of it might've been himself and his family saying, what's the problem? What's the problem? Why are you not being unsuccessful? They remember your parents have only ever seen you, these kids win, you know? So when they're not doing well, guess what? They think it's, they think something, you know, it might be the coach, the pro it's actually, and sometimes the reality is it's you. <laughs> it, it, it's you. The kid sometimes has to buy into what has to be done. It's, there's a lot of discipline that comes at wrestling. And um, oop, sorry about that. My battery's going a little low. Sorry about that. But there's a lot of discipline that comes at wrestling. So hopefully, hopefully, you know, people buy into what, what's, what's happening and he's making progress. And if you want to keep winning like that, then you got to do little things. Well, your point about parents only seeing our family members only seeing kids win. I think when I coach them, like these guys are unrealistic about how good this kid really is, but it can get turned on its head where you go, Hey, you, you're a winner your whole life, Lou. You know, if you're like, I'm older than you, like Lou, you've been winning your whole life. Just cause you have to be more disciplined now, just be more disciplined. You're a winner. And you can almost turn that into a positive instead of saying, sure. Hey, you're at this level now, probably going to start getting your tail kicked. Cause these guys are all good you can make it positive, which is a really smart spin on things, you know, and sure. the thing about getting whomped, that's what my dad would always say. Like, you know, we're like, Hey man, you got to learn how to get out of legs. You're like, just wait till the first tournament. They'll come in on Sunday. <laughs> they want to learn how to get out of legs after yeah. somebody put a saddle on it for a half an hour, you know? So yeah, no, that's, they, they learn, they at least learn that they have a problem. <laughs> Sometimes they don't think they have a problem. Yeah. So you know, another guy that really stuck out to me this weekend was Woodley. And obviously he, he did well at nationals last year. He kind of broke through in that bracket that, you know, was kind of haywire. If you're going by chalk, you know, made it to the semis and wrestled well. And then he beats Brucky this year, you know, where that's an interesting way where like Brucky is an Ivy league guy, the transfer, but he's back. Darmstead's back, you know, Braxton Amos comes in. That's a weight class. that's kind of gotten it's loaded really marquee real yeah with a lot of names too like a lot of world medals like that and heavyweight have kind of really gotten exciting you know I, obviously you know like a woodley to me he's like got the most offense i've seen on your team in terms of just attacking 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 at a really high rate how important was it for him just to get a win like that even though it's early in the season just to keep him on the right path i, I think they're all important you know as you go to these tournaments you know, getting your hand raised is important. It's, it's, it's habitual, right? You know, like they say, winning is habitual, so is losing. So when, once you're used to winning it all the time and, and that's your standard of excellence, it, it, it makes it a lot easier, especially when you're beating really quality opponents. And, and Brucky is. He's a great opponent. And, and uh, it was close, but, you know, you, you, win, the, you win the close ones. And, and he's been on the other side of some, some, uh, some close losses. You know, he lost to Norfleet on, on, a, on a clock problem last year. And um, so and he's got some of these matches coming up. So it's, a, it's important for anybody on my team, including Jake, to, to continue to get their hand raised and to keep making progress for the program and for themselves. For be, to be where they want to be and to, to really make a run at, you know, trying to win a national title for themselves, they got to keep making progress. And uh, winning those close matches, because we know at the nationals, there's going to be some close ones, some heaters. And how, do you get, how are you going to respond to that? Are you going to fall apart or are you going to be, you know, you're going to have some incredible focus? So, you know, I, I think for Jake, that was, it, it's a big win beating Cappy too was a big win and yeah. so you know they're just they're just good quality wins and when you start tacking a bunch of those up and you keep doing it it's it's showing that you're you know you're what they would call good you know placing doesn't always make you, you know good just doing it over and over again he does it every time you know he always shows up and so you know I think it's real important for Jake to, to get those get those wins and to continue making progress and this week Russell West Virginia and show that you're a performer again. Yeah. Well, it, 
it's interesting because like a lot of teams will ease into a schedule, you know, like last year, like the Big Ten only wrestled themselves, which, you know, like was probably smart on their part. But, you know, like you wouldn't have gotten a match against a Brucky, you know, because you just wouldn't have seen each other last year. And also, like, I know you're well, I know how smart you are, but I know how much you break down film and stuff like that. So you'll find four things that Jake could have done better. And you'll find four things that you think Jake could do against Brucky the next time they wrestle. So just getting that mat time and getting that, I guess I'm old calling it film, but video, getting that content where you guys can go through it has got to be really valuable. Um, You and I talked quickly off air, you had had a couple hammers that weren't there. So uh, you mentioned Demas, Thomas, and then Graydon Penner, a kid, you know, my Missouri people know really well. Uh, You got to be excited when these kids, you know, these guys step on the mat, right? I mean, Demas, obviously most of us know about, Thomas has had a lot of wins. Tell, tell the people that don't know a little bit about Graydon Penner. Well, Graydon Penner, you know, he's a 74 pounder. Um, he had, a, he had uh, an injury and so he, he's just coming off an injury. And so we're just kind of going slow with him, trying to get him back on track, you know, but Graydon, you know, he was ranked number one for a while at 170. You know, I think they had him ranked eight, third at 82 coming out of high school. We're excited about him. I think his wrestling's really good. If we can get him in that lineup at some point, um, you know, he'll be exciting. You know, he's a shooter, you know, so, and, and, uh, and he expects a lot out of himself. So, you know, he'll be fun once we get, get him healthy and ready to roll. Yeah. So you guys have had a, a change in your coaching staff. Hunter Stever goes back to Ohio. You move Sam Hayeswinkle from the RTC to the, the college coaching staff. And obviously I'm guessing you'll eventually fill that RTC position, you know, but I was struck the last time I was there, A, how well you guys all get along with each other, but, but B, like, it feels like everybody's all in. Like, I felt like for a while from the outside, like, I really like Nick Heflin. He's always been nice to me, but when he's competing and coaching, it's sort of hard. You have to be selfish one or the other. He seems to really have escalated as his commitment to coaching and really being a good example. The guys, obviously he's probably a beast in the weight room, you know, Um, you know, Leitner's, you know, Leitner, national champion, a legend down there. And then you bring in NATO down there, it seems like, and then along with Hayes, who's a freaking Olympian, and then all the stuff you've done. How happy are you with the staff right now, just overall where you guys are headed? Well, you know, I, I think there's not that many staffs that have two Olympians and a world team member on it. And then you got a national team member, and then you got a national champion who's trying to make a world Olympic team. So we, we have plenty of, you know, um, people that understand wrestling. And I think we're all in on that. I think everybody wants to be really good. Everybody's going the same direction, you know, and you just got to keep getting the kids, keep working them hard, keep knowing what we know is right. And, um, you know, to keep building, you know, and it, it, it takes the right kid, you know, and not everybody fits in the right program. So, you know, looking for the right kids that, that care about their education, that want to make sure that they, you know, work, have incredible work ethic that, that, that live their life the way they're supposed to, so they can be successful um, is what we look for, you know, and, um, and, you know, uh, or I like to just say, hey, you know, for us, it, it's every day is a work day, you know, every, and you, it's a work day until you until you get it right. You know, so, you know, being there for your student athletes, making sure that you're giving them everything you, you can give them, you know, they're giving everything they can give. You got to give everything you can give, you know, so I, I think it's important. And I think all of them understand that. And so, you know, as we continue to make progress, it's just keep building, keep building, keep believing, keep working. Yeah, a friend of mine, he he and his son went down there on a recruiting trip, and one they loved it. But you know, a couple of comments that they made to me were, you know, and I wasn't surprised because I think I know you better than they do. But they're like, man, those guys are really serious about winning, really serious about lifestyle, like, and like literally, like, hey, if you're not into this lifestyle, don't come here. It's not going to be a good fit. But they also talked about how your coaching staff talked about you behind your back. And I mean that in the best possible way. Like this guy leads from the front. No, I I mean, everybody. (laughs) No, but they're saying like how hard you work, you know, first one in last one out, turn the lights on, turn the lights off kind of thing. And I think that, I think that that's starting to take hold there just from watching it from the outside. Cause you know, when you come in, you kind of got to, build with the clay that was left behind and now you're starting to put your own people in there and shaping things the way you want and it's starting to feel like your you know your fingerprints are really on the program 
I guess, you know, everybody yeah. preaches lifestyle, but with, to you, like, what does real commitment mean at this level? Well, here's my expectations. I expect the people that we recruit to care about their education, to make sure that they get a, a degree. I, I care about their workload. I'll be here in the mornings seeing who's doing the work. You know, um, but I, I know what goes on. You know, I don't, I'm, I'm not a crazy office person anymore. Um, I spend time with the kids. I, I, I know kind of who, who does what, who works out on their own, who, who loves it, who doesn't love it. You, you learn a lot about people just by their expression, the look on their face, you know, that, you know, what, what's the old, that's about 55, actually about, they say, I think 80 to 90% of it is done through, you know, um, just your facial expressions and the way you, you know, the way you look, you don't realize what you tell people, you know, that, you know, what goes on and how much you like something. And, if, and trust me, the consistency is hard to come in and, and be excited day in and day out. It's, it's on the days that you feel like that you got to come and get, and get, get it going. Yeah. You know, everybody knows when you feel great. When you're winning, everything's great and hunky-dory. It's great. It's when you feel terrible. Can you come in and still do the job? Can you come in and still perform and, and work at it? And Because you love it that much because you, you got real goals and you really want them. You know, and, and so expectations for me, Dave, are just, listen, I, I just want someone that, that cares that cares about what they do. You know, don't give your life to something you don't care about, is all I would say to anybody. And, you know, it's, it doesn't make sense to me. You know, if you, if you love it, it should show. It should show. Everything you do, it should show. I talked to a coach a couple of years ago, and this thing st struck me as really interesting. You, normally, when you talk to coaches, like, well, what makes somebody a champion? And, you know, it's like, well, they work hard, you know, good athleticism, attention to details, you, you know, team coachable, two ears, one mouth, all that sort of stuff. I mean, all the cliches, right? This guy said something to me that was really unique, I thought. He said, he was talking about an athlete, and I won't name the coach or athlete because this is your podcast, but he said, this athlete has probably the singular ability to concentrate on one task or movement for longer than I've ever seen anybody do it, you know, without like, and the opposite is like, you know, like somebody like I do jujitsu, somebody shows a move, I do it six times and I'm on to the next thing and I haven't learned it. It's, it's, you know, like 1% learned, right? If everything goes perfect, if the guy grabs me exactly this way and he does it nice and slow, I might get it. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, watch. And this guy did the same thing for 35 minutes straight. And it was with yes. different, different angles, different, you know, but if you either want to come in on that, or if there's something else like that, because you guys, I always tell people your love, your world is excellent. It's like your normal is most people's 1%. Maybe what's another characteristic or something like that, that isn't a cliche, or if you just want to talk about that one, that either people well, like us should be doing to make ourselves better or what we should be looking for in other people. Well, I think that when you talk about somebody doing the, the reps, you know, it, it's, you know, when you go to practice, there's this incredible focus you have to have. And people think that they got it when they've done it three times. It's like, no, he's putting, you know, 30 minutes into the same thing so that he, he, his brain can, you know, can operate and function and do that without thinking the next time. He does it without thinking. He's so good at it, you know, that deliberate practice that people talk about, that that's kind of focused. It's exhausting to be able to do that, by the way. 30, 35 minutes of something, concentrate that hard on something for that long is, is very, it's mind numbing and it's very difficult. But it, that kind of concentration is what's gonna help people. When in the moment when you're exhausted, when you're tired and your brain's going everywhere, you'll be able to function because you understand, I've done it this many times. I can do this in my sleep, you know? And I think that that's, when you talk about that type of workload, that's what they're doing. They're trying to get that thing ingrained in them. And so that I can, I can, it's like autopilot. I can do it on autopilot. Just no problem. Same thing, same thing. Tired, no problem. And, and that's what it'll take sometimes. You know, when you're not at your best, autopilot, man. I had to, I had to rely on all my training. So, by the way, my, my phone is getting closer to, if I, if I go out on you, it's because my phone's dying. I, I apologize, but. So, Should we wrap I, it I up? Like, are crazy. you like 5% or where are you? Um, we got bad eyes right now. I, I'm about at 8%, 7% right. right now. We'll, we'll tighten it up. So 
<laughs> we'll just go cover a couple things real quick. So one of the things that I learned in sales was they talked about these four stages of learning. And the last one is called unconscious incompetence. And they compare that to like driving or shaving, like first thing in the morning. And that's what that reminds me of is like, you just do stuff. You don't even think about it, that kind of thing. So um, yeah. last couple things, just to try to get in there. Tell me a little bit about how excited you are. I mean, I know you're looking ahead and are asking you to, and you don't do that, but the big 12 gets tougher this year. It gets better. It's good for seating and everything else. And then what are your thoughts on how RTCs have changed the game? You guys with like Sam and NATO and that kind of stuff. Well, RTCs have definitely changed the game and it's, a, it's a different model now to be successful. And it, it requires alumni, you know, them to donate and to be a part of that and getting athletes and funding your Olympic guys to make sure you're, you're recruiting towards that. So it's really changed the game. And all you really do is integrate a world-class athlete with, with college guys and college guys with high school guys. And, and it's really that simple, but it needs resources and you need a coach <laughs> to understand that. So, you know, th that's really the, the name of the game in RTCs. You know, I think the image and likeness thing is going to hurt some things, you know, when you start being able to, you know, people start paying people and doing things in companies and, you know, and coaches are not supposed to be involved in any of that stuff. But, but at the end of the day, if they don't do some, you know, put some parameters on that, that I don't know if that's great for wrestling. I know people want to be paid, but, and, and, I, and I, I'm okay with that, people being paid. But at the same time, you just want to make sure that everybody's on the same playing field, you know. Um, but the RTCs definitely have changed the game. You know, when I was at Ohio State, it was, it was the biggest impact. Of, you know, I'd, I'd say that's probably why we won nationals, because we were recruiting a different way, and we were getting people that wanted to wrestle at that level. And we were helping people make World Olympic teams. And, you know, in my time there, we probably had 20 guys make a World Olympic team, 20 times it happened in the 10 years. So... You know, there's probably seven or eight different guys, but because some made multiple teams, you know, yeah. but I can tell you from, from Rollins to Heskett to Bunch to Gavin to Escondido to Snyder to Bergman to Humphrey, I don't know. There just, there just seemed to be a lot. And to Stever to, you just name it, you know, um, but they've changed the game. And it's, it's really about, you know, have, integrating those things, that those athletes to, with your college guys. That's, that's how you can improve and accelerate uh, being successful. Well, and to be fair to you, you're, you're kind of blew through it. But one year, I think there were seven slots. You know, that's when there's seven weight classes. And you guys had five of the seven, which is just like yeah. stupid good. Um, In 2013, yeah, we, we were, they were, it was a monster year. Yeah, most people are happy to have like one guy in the semifinals. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Yep. So I, I, know, I know you don't have much time left with your battery. Um, you know, I... Tell me a little bit about just, I guess, looking at the Big 12s, defending that title. Missouri comes in there now. Mm -hmm. uh, I talked to the Tulsa Sports Commission. They said it, it's going to probably be slammed with a bunch of the Kansas City and St. Louis people coming in. How much does that actually make it better for Oklahoma University and everybody else that the tournament gets bigger, it feels better, and you got another top 10 team in there? No, I just think it just really makes it more competitive. That, that, you know, those schools, you know, I think that the four or five, six schools that are really doing well and that it'll chase the title will um you know everybody it'll make it a little more um the parity be a lot more let's just say that yeah you know and i think that um all will matter and so it, it'll come down to like last year it's the last round almost the last match so i, I think i think it's good for the big 12 i mean we're trying to you know we didn't get a lot of qualifiers last year i think that the, the system wasn't was a little bit broken on us in the big 12 yeah. but um but as we continue to make progress, I mean, I think you're going to find out that we have a lot of guys. We'll have a lot more representation at the Nationals this year than we did uh, last year during the COVID year. Yeah. Well, now that the Big Ten's not staying, you know, exclusive to each other, that'll help. Uh, I don't want to cut out on your battery, so I'll end it. Uh, I appreciate you, Lou. I appreciate you've always been really intellectually generous to me and I learned a lot talking to you. Uh, appreciate your friendship. I don't know if I'll see you before March, but we'll definitely be there calling the Big 12s again. I uh, want to wish you and your guys the best of luck until, uh, until I see you, okay? All right, thanks. I appreciate your time, man. You take care. Have a good one. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, that was Lou Rostelli. We'll be back next week. Thank you.